All right, the launch notes are finally here. I'm super excited to get in here and check these out. Video is sponsored by the Patreon people. Let's go. Launch release notes. Awesome. Let's get into it here. First up, we've got game content. They talked about user experience and based on beta feedback, they have added a new welcome challenge feature that will open up when you get to the first town pride home. And it's gonna be like progressively guiding you through more and more complex stuff for the game. All right, next one here, character and roster updates. The level cap has been increased to 60. You know, that makes sense because we have the tier three now and the roster level cap, this is a, you know, like your account level thing. Uh, that's increased up to 250. It was only 100 in the closed beta. Again, this makes a lot of sense with us having tier three and all this extra stuff at launch that you, you know, normally you don't get. The removed summoner and added sorceress subclass is in the notes, so definitely don't expect that, you know, surprise uh, summoner, I'm thinking. And then next up here, we've got dungeon and raid content. Uh, three new continents added, Yorn, Phaeton, and Punica. Again, this is because we got the tier three of chaos dungeons. We get up to Punica through stages one through three. And then Yorn, Phaeton, Punica, chaos gates have been added. Okay, chaos gates also cool. Uh, going on here, they say during the closed beta, content up to the Phantom Palace was available to players. Uh, since then, we have added a bunch of new Abyss dungeons up to Array as well. And then for Guardian raids, of course, they just mentioned they've added all the way up to the end of like the tier five ones. Tier six would be technically like the second half of the tier three ones. Below that here, they basically just tell us that they added the uh, other tower, you know, the tier two tower. And then also additional cube levels have been added. Uh, this next part is super exciting for me personally. Island and sea content. During closed beta, there was about 70 islands accessible and they've added three more continents with 27 additional islands. That's super awesome. Co-op quests added to Yorn Strait, Phaeton Strait, and Punica Strait. These are sea regions. Uh, sea gates added, additional ghost ships added. Super cool stuff. Moving on, we got scheduled activities. Players can check four types of content through the compass or accessing the calendar in the top left of the HUD. Activity times are based on the local time. Okay, yep, I've done a guide on this before, how like, you know, you can view all of the uh, different events. There's several different spots in the UI to view lots of different upcoming events. And they quickly here kind of give you a little rundown of the different types of events that there are, right? So you've got field bosses, chaos gates, and ghost ships, and there's also adventure islands. There's a bunch of details in here about how exactly they work. I won't go through exactly all of that. I will make sure to link this article, though. Next, we got Stronghold content. Stronghold Knowledge Vault has been added. Awesome. This is the experience transfer. You can use the Knowledge Vault completing the following steps. Complete the Stronghold quest first steps. Progress a character to level 50, complete North Vern main quest, and then complete Nothing is Impossible for Sickens quest offered by the Stronghold's Butler. Awesome. While receiving knowledge transfer, you can only transfer knowledge for one continent at a time. Transfers go in order of the storyline, starting from North Vern. Once knowledge transfer has begun, you cannot cancel. You cannot do instant complete. Characters receiving a knowledge transfer cannot use power pass. Knowledge Vault will be available for North Vern up to Fate. Nice. So we could knowledge transfer all the way to tier two. All right, next section, we've got gear and tiers. Uh, see, updated the tier one through tier three progression support after reaching a certain item level and completing continent world quests, you will get accessories and ability stones. RU had this, it's part of the catch up thing. Uh, so you get basically like gold grade, you know, accessories and jewelry, and they all have like heavy armor on them and some like decent stats, at least usually like agility and crit, which will like work decent for leveling for, you know, pretty much everybody really. Uh, and see tier one here, we've got 100% success support. Oh, wow. So we're getting the like increased leveling basically, uh, like on the gear for the 100% support. Uh, wow. That's really awesome. Again, I will link this so you can go through all the fine details here, but this is nice. It sounds like we're going to have like a real smooth gear progression up through tier three. All right. So next up, we've got events and rewards. They're letting us know that we're going to have login reward things going right off the bat for rewards. That's really cool to hear, in my opinion. The next really cool stuff out of here, I won't go through all of them to save time, is this one here. They added the ability for users to add an account similar to adding the roster as a friend and display which character they're currently playing on. Friend lists are no longer locked to characters. That is fantastic. The next step is guilds, please. 
And then the other massive one is obviously the DirectX 11 support. We're so like, like RU doesn't have that yet. We are lucky. They don't have the knowledge transfer yet either. We are getting lucky on this launch. It's a beautiful version of the game. Next up, we got the new features. They mentioned the classes letting us know about the, you know, the sorceress and the uh, striker. You know, we're getting those newer ones instead of some of the original ones. Global chat. That's pretty cool. They added a, you know, a whole global chat. The Korean voiceover thing that we get has been added as a DLC pack on Steam. That is awesome. Please note this only affects spoken dialogue to allow players to experience the original voiceover of the game. Text options are restricted to... In okay. All right, cool. Next thing we got here is they added this thing called Room of Growth. After you complete the Northburn World Quest... Uh, after image of the rift this feature allows you to experience and learn additional game modes such as the mounts pets crafting engravings disassembling and refining that's cool added a compass adventures will find menu accessible through the widget that showcases the active okay different field bosses ghost ships and all that added added adventure islands this is a new activity that directs users to islands that are only available during certain times nice once on the island you'll begin a co-op quest and must face a boss in order to achieve a Awesome, I want to do those. Custom PvP matches and spectating has been added. Okay, cool. Good stuff. Lots of good stuff. All right, cool. Let's get into the westernization stuff here. Free-to-play focus. They talk about, you know, there's been improvements to the monetization. One of the big things that they did was change the uh, getting extra loot at the end of things like Abyssal Dungeons from crystals to gold. That was a big step in the right direction there. Uh, they talk about improving on the, you know, the language filtering because, uh, you know, people had complained it was too restrictive. Uh, see, currency exchange, they said that they updated that to be a little bit more clear and just make it more obvious, you know, how the exchange works. Power pass. This is one that everyone is interested in. Two different ways to get the method one. When the player completes the main quest in North Vern, a single Vern power pass token will be okay. Awesome. So we're getting that same thing from beta. That's awesome. And a second power pass is granted if a player watches cutscenes and cinematics all the way through. Interesting. All right, and they'll let you know you can only get a maximum of two of the power passes per game account. And then there is this thing called Adventure's Path after you boost a character. And it kind of quickly, it's like a quest series, essentially, that very quickly runs you through. And you end up having to do like a certain like number of the main scenarios, like the Siege one, you know, like it puts you in there. All right, last section we've got here is on the store. And they just basically talk about working with Smilegate to improve things and letting us know also that the store will be available right off the bat, beginning with the early launch, including the Mari Secret Shop on its own schedule. Uh, the Crystalline Aura has been improved a bit for us. And it says here they will continue to add additional functions to it at launch. Uh, let's see. And then also odds information. This one was interesting and pretty cool. But any of the stuff that's in the store that is random, you can actually go to an odds page here. Again, this will be linked. And it, you know, has a breakdown of what your actual chances are, you know. So maybe you don't, you know, waste it thinking that you've got a decent chance. All right, guys. Well, there is the launch notes. Finally getting those. Super awesome. A lot of really good stuff in there. I'm excited about it. Videos brought to you by the Patreon people. Thank you guys very, very much. If you enjoy my content, maybe leave me the like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time.